But joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show right now is a two-time Super Bowl winning head coach and now author of the book A Giant Win Inside the New York Giants Historic Upset Over the New England Patriots in Super Bowl. Let me get this right. 42. That's my uh, my good. Uh, sometimes I don't read Roman numerals very well. My glasses. <laughs> Available now wherever you get your books. Uh, Tom Coughlin here on the Rich Eisen Show helping us preview and kick off Super Bowl week. How you doing, coach? Hey, Rich. How are you? I'm doing great. Hey, you got to mention Glendale now, you know. My two favorite cities in the country are Glendale, Arizona, and uh, Indianapolis. That's right. There you go. I, I was there. That day. It was 15 years ago last week. Was the, the Yes, it was. Yes, it was. What, February 3rd. Well, you know, I, I, I want to, uh, leading up to that, you know, ask you about that night in the Meadowlands to end the regular season. Uh, because that was, yeah. a, that was a huge night for NFL Network, uh, Tom. I, I mean, we were getting... We were getting uh, a whole bunch of people saying, how can we see the game? NFL Network wasn't everywhere like it thankfully is right now. And, and everybody right. wanted to see the Giants against the Patriots because the Patriots are going for an undefeated regular season. You were already locked into your seat to make the playoffs. Why did you push the pedal to the metal that night the way that you did? Uh, Rich, that's a great question. And, uh, and the answer is very simple. You know, we, we, we go to Buffalo and win. I won't tell you the lead-up stories. that they, they weren't real pretty. We go to Buffalo and we win, and now we're in the the, uh, the playoffs. And the first question I get asked is, Coach, you're going to rest your players? <laughs> it's like, you know, section B of the you have to ask questions. So, anyway, I get back, and I'm, you know, I'm stern about that. That bugged me. But in thinking about it, hey, we're the I'm the head coach of the New York Giants, the red, white, and, and blue, it's the flagship franchise of the National Football League. I'm a historian. I never want it said in years going forward that with a team striving for an undefeated season, the New York Giants didn't put their best foot forward. So I presented that to our team, Rich, and they bought in completely. They wanted to compete against, at that time, 15-0 and New England Patriots, quarterback by Tom Brady and the greatest offensive machine in the history of, of the NFL at that point in time, and Bill Belichick, one of the greatest defensive coaches of all time. So do you think your performance uh, a month later in that Super Bowl uh, was born out of you going toe-to-toe with that team that night, that it was, uh, an, for the lack of a better word, pardon me, an easier sell to the team to say we can hang with these guys had you not competed that night coach well we, we walked off the field and we could hear the, the patriot players and the giant players as they you know as they talked going off the field and so my my feeling and listening was that the patriot players thought that they had gotten all they wanted that night and they they thought we were a pretty good football team and even one or two of them would say maybe we'll see each other later on so I think there wasn't any doubt about that. But the thing to remember, Rich, that game was 38-35. Right. The Super Bowl was to be a completely different kind of a game. So we learned, the Patriots learned about the Giants, and the Giants learned about the Patriots because that night of Week 17, the the only deciding factor was was a long pass from Brady to Moss, which was the deciding factor in the game. Yeah, that was a 65-yarder that, 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 that caused them to have their milestone moments of touchdown passes and touchdown receptions. But, you know, and right. as you pointed out, it was a much more defensive battle in that Super Bowl. When, when you were standing on the sidelines, did you see that Tyree caught the ball with his helmet or did you have to see it up on the screen that night? No, I saw it. I, I thought I saw it. Uh, but b- what was more difficult for me and uh, what really presented the bigger anxiety – before the ball even got thrown, was three Patriot players are on, on uh, Eli just, just like you know what. I mean, they penetrate. They're on him. And I'm looking first at him to see, you know, he's wiggling, wiggling, wiggling. Then I look at Mike Carey. Mike, don't blow this dead. Don't blow this dead, you know. Mm-hmm. And so out of that somehow, Eli wiggles forward and fires the ball down the field like a javelin, you know, a long throw. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, don't overthrow this, Eli, because it'll be intercepted. But David Tyree, you know, six foot, 195 pounds. Rodney Harrison, six two, about you know, 215. They go up in the air, and David Tyree makes a great catch with two hands. 
as soon as that happens, Rodney Harrison strips one hand away, mm. and David Tyree has the presence of mind to pin the ball to the side of his helmet. So the next question is, can he possibly hang on? He goes to the ground, and then the thing that I tell people about all the time is, if you and I are playing in the backyard and somebody goes across the back of my knees, the ball is coming out. You know, yeah. you're going to try to defend and protect your knees more than you are the football. David Tyree gets Rodney Harrison across the back of his knees and still hangs on to the ball, secures it again with two hands and pulls it in. And again, Rodney's swiping away at the ball and he's able to hang on to the ball. So it is, it is Rich, the greatest catch in the history of the Super Bowl. Tom Coughlin here on the uh, Rich Eisen Show, two-time Super Bowl champion uh, right here. A giant win inside the New York Giants' historic upset over the Patriots in Super Bowl 50 to, uh, 42, available now where you get your books. What was your comment? Was it just a brief chat? Did you ever talk to Belichick about this ever since? No. Nothing. No, but but people forget you might not because you you watch you watch these things. But, mm-hmm. you know, when, when we held them, there was, what, 38 seconds left. They right. threw two rockets. Brady threw two rockets down the field. The first one was close, defended. The second one was just defended. So there's a few seconds left, and we got to go out and kneel down, you know. Across the field comes Bill Belichick. He comes about five yards from my sideline. I go out from the sideline. We hug. He says some, some very gracious things for a guy in that situation who, you know, had, had just – Bought everything he had to try to get the undefeated season for his for history and for his his Patriot team, but but um, then turned and left and he got he was criticized for that. You know the game wasn't over. The game wasn't over, but uh, but that's how the thing ended. Was Bill walking back and he went directly to the to the locker room. Well, but you guys are, are from the Parcells uh, staffs, yep. right? From back in the day. Yes, we are. What, what do you got yes, for me are. on? What do you got for me on Parcells? What did? What? What? What's your? You got a favorite Bill Parcells story, <laughs> Tom Coughlin, that you can? I, I don't have. I mean, Parcells is Parcells. You know, he's you, very, very direct. Uh, there was never any wasted time, no wasted verbiage. Uh, you knew exactly what was expected of you, and uh, and he was, you know. He was a great guy to work for uh, because he was so direct. And, and, of course, we had a heck of a football team in 90 when we won that Super Bowl over the Buffalo Bills. But the experience for me was a great one in that with Wellington Mara, with George Young, with Bill Parcells, with continuity, with the way they built their franchise and, and, and the way that they stuck with their, their franchise and their people. You know, you remember in 88, we were 10-6, and six, got knocked out of the playoffs mm-hmm. by the Jets. And uh, Mr. Mara came in the next day and shook hands with everybody and, and thanked them for their contributions. And later, we're in the, you know, obviously in the playoffs in 89. We win it in 90. Mr. Mara does not have to come in and shake our hand. You know, it's, a, it's there for us. So uh, the experience with, with Bill Parcells was a great one for me, a one of learning, learning about winning. But there were great coaches on that staff. I mean, Belichick did a tremendous job. You know the, the historical story about his, uh, his game against the, our defensive game against Buffalo, our defensive game against uh, the 49ers. You know, if we don't beat them, they win three in a row. You know, that that kind of stuff was just terrific. Tom Coughlin here uh, on, on the Rich Eisen Show. Do you have a, a sense of how Super Bowl 57 is going to go on Sunday? You got any uh, opinion on what I, you're, you're thinking? I'm just a fan like you are, Rich. And right. I'm looking at that thing and seeing strong points uh, from both teams and praying for a good game. Is there any uh, comp comparison for Mahomes to the guys that you um, were were either quarterback uh, coaching or coaching against in your days, Tom? Well, the, you got one. The amazing thing about about Mahomes is that he has escape ability, but he's not escaping to run. He's escaping to provide more time for people to get open down the field, and then he has an uncanny ability to be accurate you know, on the move with all kinds of variety of plays, whether he's flipping the ball, throwing it underhand, whatever. Uh, he's very unique in, in that particular way. Uh, we've competed, obviously, down through the years with, with quarterbacks that are, have outstanding mobility, and they are very, very difficult to defend. But this is, this is a different style. They may run, you know, Andy's run the speed option and that type of thing, but um, I don't think we would see that if there's any threat of injury to that kid. Uh, yeah, I know. I mean, like, I- I'm trying to figure out, like, I mean, he's not 
I mean, Elway was huge, right? Big, huge yeah, uh, big bodied man. guy. Rogers, like, like maybe he's a he's he's a, di a different version of Aaron Rodgers. I I don't I don't know if there's any comparison for Mahomes. I don't either. Right? I think they're unique. I think the three guys you just mentioned are all unique. Right. You know, you you had, you had Elway with tremendous ability. You know, the the deep ball. The, you know, they would roll him one way and he'd throw it back across the field seventy yards the other way. You know, Aaron Rodgers is 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 mobile. He's athletic. He uh, he has a great touch. He puts the ball right on the money down the field. And Mahomes is just a creator, and and done amazing things. For me, uh, as I look at the evolution of the game, yeah. watching the playoff game a couple of years ago, where with 13 seconds mm -hmm. they moved the ball down the field, kicked the field goal to tie. It just it was it's incredible. I mean, nowadays you look at that. If there's any time on the clock, the other guy has a chance to win. Right. Yeah, and, the, and and he wound up beating uh, the team that was featuring your, one of your successors at the with the Giants and Brian Dable. I, I, any similarities? Do you think with what Dable's done with Jones that you had with Eli back in the day? Do you is there any any potential the connective fact, tissue here, Tom? Well, the, the connective t connective tissues. Both those guys were very very smart. Uh, they had a great sense and feel for the game. Uh, obviously, Eli was not a runner, but I, I laugh because, you know, we played the first the first uh, game in Europe in London was mm. Giants and Dolphins, and the difference was Eli had, a, I think it was a 10-yard touchdown. <laughs> but, but that game was in a quagmire. It was a different game. I think Daniel, it's good to see Daniel come into his own. I, I like him a lot. He's a very smart kid. He has a strong arm. He can run. He's not going to run. They're not gonna, you know, he run. He'll run in the big games. He'll run when the opportunity's there. But like Mahomes, he's trying to get down. So those those are the players today for me that are the most difficult to defend. Those that have the ability. Because what are you gonna do? You put somebody up there who's going to, you know, mimic the quarterback, if you will. Can't double everybody. You know, you just you can't. So if they know where the mar where the matchup is and the ability to move people around up front. Where the matchup they're looking for happens to be, ball's going there. Mm -hmm. It'll go there very quickly. So uh, if you lay back, he runs. You know, it's, it's just a, it's an interesting concept now because of the chess game that's played with even even a guy like Mahomes. If you drop everybody out of there or play what I used to call 22 man and they see they can run into a hole with a two deep, then he's going to do it. Yeah. Tom Coughlin here on the Rich Eisen Show. And a couple minutes I have left with you, Tom, I want to ask you a couple of uh, off-the-board questions here. First one for you, uh, that playoff win in Green Bay, famous for so much, but it's also famous for how red your face was. <laughs> um, were you frostbitten? You know, and how long did it take you for your face to thaw out from that game, Tom? I think June of the following year. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was. It was fine. Right. My face is an Irish face anyway yes, that looks like, you know, like somebody stuck a bunch of uh, berries on my face. It's red here. It's red there. It's all over the place. So, okay. uh, but it was, it's interesting because I got, I got letters from people that, that I'd never heard of that were sincerely uh, concerned about, <laughs> about, about whether I was, I was, you know, frosted. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I was wondering if any loved ones were like calling you after the game. Are you all right? I was wondering that no, watching the game. No. You know, I mean, it's, no, the, I was they were all concerned. in the locker room after the game. Okay, yeah. very excited. Everybody that, was there. That was, very was that was a fun game. That was a that was some game. Now Eli threw the ball like it was seventy five plaques ago. I think he had eleven catches. It was unbelievable. If I'm not mistaken, that was far as last game as a Packer too, Coach. It was. It was. We got a lot of last games that we don't have time to talk about. No, cool. but it was. It was his last game there. And remember, it was uh, Corey Webster with the pick in, in overtime that set the ball up. I mean, we didn't make a yard after that after we intercepted the ball. But uh, Lawrence Tynes was was our That's right. outstanding field goal kicker who had missed two field goals. One was a bad snap given. The other one was just a miss. I had asked him earlier in the game. I said, Lawrence, can you kick a 46-yard field goal? This is in the first half. He turned his back on me and walked away. So, so. So when it came time for that one, it was 47 yards, and I just stood there and looked at him. I didn't say a word. I didn't say a word. I looked at him. He dropped his cape and ran on the field. I yelled, field goal. The coaches are all yelling at me. Oh, coach, what if he misses? Look at the field position the Packers will have. You know, he kicked it. Could have been 55. He would have made it. I love it.
Fantastic. And then the last one for you is we had Jesse Palmer on the show last week. You didn't say that. I was going to say it. That's the funniest thing I've seen in a long time. Okay, so you saw it. <laughs> so you saw well, they, it. Somebody, people had to send that to me because they, they, they were – they were they were in stitches. They couldn't they couldn't help them. So we, were we were so too. Hard. So what's your perspective? Was, what's your end of that conversation? Then well, that he the said. funniest part about it is when when he tells you that he's sweating bullets calling me, and you tell him you're sweating bullets, thinking he has to call me. <laughs> That's right. I was. <laughs> that was great. I was. That was funny. So that was funny. I'll tell you. So what was your end of that? Con- Do you remember when he called you up and and and? Uh, yeah, I remember all of it. I remember all of that. You know, he's telling me where he's going, and I'm sitting there listening patiently and trying to figure out what what the message is here, <laughs> wondering if there's something coming. You know, <laughs> I coach because of this. Do I have to? Can I miss it? OTAs? And I said, you coming to? You know, the mini camps and OTAs. And, oh yeah, coach, I'll be there. So there's a pause, and I'm thinking, out loud, okay. Jesse, what what in the world are you calling me for? You know, so, <laughs> I love that. But, but everybody knew, all, all all giant people, the whole building knew that he was in the Bachelor. So the idea that I would know it was Jessica, you couldn't miss it because all the equipment guys naturally <laughs> were talking about. I was about to say, they how are you it. up to speed on what was happening in the Bachelor? How are you up to? All speed? I have to all I have to do is get it from the equipment guys. They, know, <laughs> they got everything. They know everything. If you need to know anything about any of the teams in the league, just call one of the equipment guys. <laughs> and they were on it. They were on it. Oh, my Oh, gosh. they loved it because they couldn't wait for him to get back because it was more material to be busting chops in the locker room. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. I'm so glad that you saw that because it was such a funny story. Um, and congrats on the book. Can you just tell me how, how the book has been received and, 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 uh, you know, and, and your thoughts on, on this book being out there and your – your career, writing a memoir, Coach. Well, I wrote the book because it became uh, obvious to me that this was this was 15 years, and I couldn't believe it was 15 years. But it's a great, great story that needed to be told. Because remember now, I mentioned about the Patriots, the greatest offensive machine in the history of the game. The gr- receivers everywhere that could running running game. Uh, defensively, they were fourth in the league in many many categories. Loaded with talent, loaded with ability. Because so you had that object. You had a guy in '06. They wanted to fire me. The, the media in New York wanted me to wanted me out of town. So making adjustments and 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 learning from that experience, and then coming back, and then having the opportunity to go against a team in which nobody, nobody in the as the playoffs started, not one person. Uh, Fox had the game. Okay, mm. and Fox has got this game. And this game is in, like I told you, this is in, uh, Same in Arizona, just as our game was in Arizona, in Glendale. Yep. So there were, there's some similarities. But basically I wrote it because it's the great American success story. People tell you you can't do something. What do you do? You come up off the floor. We were 0-2, Rich. 0-2. They're going to fire me in the third game of the year. We go to Washington and win. We get in the second half of the year. We, we should win. 12 games. We win 10. We lose to Minnesota. Eli throws four picks. We lose to Washington against a backup quarterback. So all of these things. And then it, you know, it just comes to the point that what, what is the status of our country right now? COVID, uh, recession, inflation. Uh, the average guy can't even, can't buy eggs anymore. Can't buy a loaf of bread. Well, the story again is like this. You get knocked on your rear end. What are you going to do about it? You get up and you swing harder than you've ever swung before which is the old way that we used to talk about things in this country. But I think it goes parallel with the story of the 2007 and eight New York giants, because what we came out of, you could have sort of asked this question earlier. I didn't answer it, but what we came out of that first game was you can't let Tom Brady stand on his spot. So we sacked him five times, knocked him down 16 times. And he is a tough hombre. Now we hit him. Sometimes as hard as you could hit him, he, he's back up. The, you know, the last couple of plays of the game, we hit him on the first down and just drilled him, drilled him. And then he ended up, they rolled him out, and he, he threw it 60, 65 yards. So, I mean, a team of that nature that were 18-0, and 0, and, uh, you know, we went we went obviously 4-0 in the playoffs, won the Super Bowl. Eli had one pick in the whole time, and that was that Steve Smith tipped it up in the air yeah. kind of thing. Uh, in the first part of the game, and 
as we were driving it. Our rookie class played superior football. They acted like veterans at the end of the year. Steve Smith was outstanding. Kevin Boss, uh, you know, Ahmad Bradshaw. These guys just were unbelievable for rookies. Well, it's called a giant win inside the New York Giants historic upset of the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 42. Tom Coughlin, thank you for the call. And I guess on behalf of every other quarterback that's uh, playing in the NFL or going to play in the NFL, I guess thank you for making sure Tom Brady didn't retire with nine. You know, so, you know. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for the call. Right, Rich. Thanks for the call. Talk to you. Be well. Right Take back care. at you. Tom Coughlin, two-time Super Bowl winning head coach. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.